Hey everybody, welcome to Tax News Live today, brought to you by the Income Tax School. Thank you all for joining us today. I hope everyone is having an awesome day. I'm Terry Judge, Marketing Director at the Income Tax School, and I'm here with two of our favorite enrolled agents in Central Virginia, Ty Gaines and Lysandra Everett. If you have questions or comments during our live moment here, please feel free to type them in the comments section below and we will try to get to as many questions and comments as possible. But we will jump right in with the hot topics in tax news today. Hi everybody. What's up? We have made <coughs> it back. Hmm. We have made it back. We have had a little bit of, re just a little bit of recovery time. Yes, a just a little bit. <laughs> it hasn't slowed down. Most of you, if you're doing it taxes, you know not. it hasn't slowed down yet. We've had one thing after another. It has not. Uh, yes, that is the truth. I thought I would be... Right. Know, like we had a rough tax life. season. We had issues with software. And then after tax season, we're thinking, hey, we can catch this stuff up. And oh, what do we have? A security breach for our <laughs> software. It's just fantastic, <clears throat> you know. <laughs> as soon as we're thinking, hey, we've went over the hump, here we go. So anybody who uses CCH uh, software, and they have many softwares, Access, TaxWise, things like that, they have lots of users. They were down for a whole week. Um, some people say eight days, nine days, you know how the game goes, it seems longer. But I noticed on a Monday that it was down, and it was pretty much down that entire week. I think by Saturday they were sending some e-files. It depended on which software you had. Some came up sooner than others, but the problem was apparently some malware breach where an employee um, clicked on a link or something in the software and it caused something, so they had to shut everything down to make sure there weren't any breaches of data, and they claim there wasn't. <laughs> But can you imagine <laughs> no. if there was <laughs> oh my what that would do for a tax practice? And so that's kind of what we want to talk about today is imagine these, secu these security breaches are happening like left and right. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's almost like street cred to be hacked. It's like, hey, I got hacked. Did you get hacked? Did you <laughs> get hacked? <laughs> Have you been hacked yet? I mean, it's, it's that bad. So the software is being hacked. And so pe we as professionals, how do we... We deal with that so in this case I think CCH we got lucky but then there were some issues with Drake I think yeah. they're trying to keep them quiet but right. yeah it, yeah they were trying <laughs> to keep them quiet and it was it was tragic because um, there were a lot of tax professionals I don't know the exact number but they wound up having to get issued new EFINs mm. and so going through that process it was you didn't really figure it out until people were trying to file returns and they were getting rejected and having to contact the IRS to get their new EFINs in order to be able to file their return. So you can imagine what that did, not only for that tax practice, but also for those clients, because their clients are sitting here going, what do right. you mean you had to get a new EFIN? Like, what, what does that mean? Yeah, exactly. Like, what does that mean and how does that happen? And I think one of the failures, for lack of a better term, you know, in these tax streets when you're starting a tax business is really talking about cybersecurity so that it's more of a common thing for, for tax professionals to know that, hey, you really need, you need to have a data security plan. Yes, you need to have a, it's required you know, actually. To, it is, it's required to have a plan, a breach response plan. And, uh, you know, a lot of tax professionals that I've, I've spoken to- Don't have a clue. Don't have a clue, this was news. And it was even news to me. Yeah. You know, when I heard about it, I'm sitting here going, what? what? I have to do this? Because it's expensive. It is expensive. To actually have a plan. And think about when you're going to non-licensed professionals or people that are doing this from their kitchen sink, I guess is what a yeah. beautician or somebody would do. But <laughs> you know what I mean? At someone's kitchen table, <laughs> out the trunk the of their car. Shop, right. The exactly. The car dealership to exactly. get your Exactly. If you're doing that, they probably aren't protecting your data. Right. So we need to be careful with um, putting, you know, making sure that the people that are doing your returns are protecting your data. And if they are, then they are actually spending quite a bit of money to do so. Absolutely. So one of those things that you should do as a professional, besides the basic like virus scan, you should have that on your system. Um, you should be paying for, you know, you should have a secure line. You should not be doing taxes at Starbucks right. on unsecured Wi-Fi because people can hack into that data. Absolutely. Um, but cyber insurance 
is a good thing to have because yeah. like you noticed said about the notification process right if you purchase through your eno or your errors and emissions insurance that as any professional tax person should have yes. i'm assuming if you're a professional you have this insurance they have cyber writers now and they have for the last few years and those cyber writers will help notify your clients of a breach they'll send like letters out for you they'll investigate it if there's something that needs to be done to make these clients whole so to speak that insurance will help with that so you do need to look at investing in, i guess in cyber, in cyber and so they have other things now just because of regular breaches that are part of policies but you're you should definitely get one that's actually a cyber security policy right and 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 the thing about it is, is that even when you purchase your e and o insurance they're not going to particularly say hey you should get cyber insurance this is something that you need we're to saying yeah <laughs> yeah you should get it <laughs> right. you know, but you know you would think hey i'm calling for e and o insurance right and nobody there's like no upsell like do you no, do you, do right you, you think you might insurance? want that but you should because right. these hacks are happening and I think if the software's hacked, they take some responsibility mm -hmm. and they do quite a bit of it. But what if they don't, or what if you use your, lose your clients in the process? Right, and so, you know, but here's, here's the thing though. When I, um, when I got my cyber insurance, it came with an hour consultation with an attorney. Oh, it did? Yes, that it specializes in, um, in these types of cases. And one of the things that he told me that was absolutely shocking is that when you have a breach, you're not talking about just your clients. You're talking about people, every Prior. single every single email address you have, this might not even be a client, this might have been somebody that you just talked to on the phone. So you think about every email address you have, every phone contact that you have, all of these people need to be notified that you've had this data breach. Yep. And that is- when And prior clients, yeah. people you've, prepare returns for maybe they didn't come back but you have their 2017 return or 16 return on file they still could have gotten access to old files so pretty much any return right. <laughs> or person you've ever talked to is part of your breach can you imagine that right doesn't that scare you that <laughs> it and should and it was it was really one of those things i'm like wait a minute do you need everybody everyone? like everyone like everybody yes. and so that was a very eye-opening piece of information for me and one of the things that he also talked about was using gmail you know a lot of people use i use gmail, gmail. well what's wrong with gmail let's see, <laughs> let's see what had happened was okay wow i'm about stuff, to change my there's, email there's after about, this some stuff you find out okay <laughs> um but it says in in google's terms of service that they have access to all of these emails so it's really not secure mm -hmm. and so he so said, if google you know, gets a breach for the most part which yeah. could happen yahoo did yeah <laughs> that right. was the biggest breach in history was yahoo it was so, yahoo. so if, yeah so if what happened to yahoo happens to google ooh, that's not that's not going to be cute and so you know so the i think the lack of education surrounding data security is very you know it's crucial because you know, if you have a data breach, it, there's already just the breach itself, but then it's, that's the, it breaks that trust with the client because they don't feel like, you know, their information is secure, secure. with you. So they go with someone else and they'll, it'll probably be an interview question from that point, like, what are you doing for data security? You Which know? many people are not doing anything. So you're better off with these larger firms that can invest in security or you need to drill your actual professional, the smaller clients, like myself and Lysandra, we pay for that mm -hmm. cybersecurity because we're scared to death because one breach and we pretty much are out of business. Right, and so one of the things that I was looking at was the Graham Leach Bliley Act, GLBA. Mm -hmm. Now this was something that's a trip. And so what the act says, and I'm gonna read this word, I had to write this down because that was too <laughs> much to remember. It says practices must be in place to protect personal information and financial information from foreseeable threats in security and data integrity. Organizations can be fined up to a hundred thousand dollars. One hundred thousand. That's six figures. Those, you, know. <laughs> you might not even make that much, but For you real. could be fined that much. And the officers and directors can be held personally liable and fined up to ten thousand dollars personally. So not only your business, but you. 
and that is that was enough for me to go get my whole entire life <laughs> when I got off of that webinar to go find cyber we get this done too today, today. Yes. yes and the policies aren't cheap I mean you're you between ENO and cyber for a single person could be almost a thousand dollars or more are the larger right? firms are going to be much higher um, each each employee increases the the risk so then there's the what the value I mean the price of it could be much higher but right. it's not a cheap thing you're gonna have to pay for that but think about if you don't exactly. you want to pay a thousand or you want to pay ten to a hundred thousand and possibly lose your practice no, I'm right. this four -figure check. so you have to do <laughs> you have to take precautions you should have shredders in your office mm -hmm. Because honestly, a lot of the data breaches are simple paper breaches. Right. We hear on the news about the the electronic breaches and someone going through software, but many breaches. The Jackson Hewitt. Right. Was last year or something some months back. Yeah, and you know, and the and the thing about it is, is people think, oh, I'm just going to take this these old files and just dump them. But those old files have Data. personally identifiable information. Yes. They have birth dates. They have social security numbers. They've got just children's addresses names and, and names. You can get a credit card after getting right. some you know, information out of a dumpster. Right. It's already bad enough you got the funky websites that put all your business out well, there that's anyway. True. But then to add you know your your social security numbers and birth dates, those are the things that people you have to, to protect identify that. yourself. You know, when you're signing up for yeah. whether it's loans or anything else in this, when you find out, oh, did you know that you bought a house? Like, right. for, I bought, bought a house. <laughs> I didn't move into like, it. I'm and and even <laughs> like, at, I guess it's not required in some places. Like, if you go to a doctor's office or something, they may ask for your social. Apparently, that's not required mm -hmm. for a doctor's office. So you probably shouldn't fill that out because then if someone leaves in a huff or decides they're mad at the job and takes any of that information, or if someone is working there that's unscrupulous yeah. they have your information so you have to be careful putting it out you have to take that same precaution for your clients that you're going to protect their information so you probably should share that with clients on how you protect it hacks and breaches occur but you should take as a tax professional really you should spend a lot of energy time and money protecting your clients data and, and I don't know that many people do yeah and even from the client standpoint this is when you also need to have a level of understanding with your tax professional because I have, you know, clients that have gotten upset. Like, no, I, I did not keep that. You gave that to me. I used it. I shredded it. And they're like, why did you shred it? Well, because that keeps your data safe. And so that might mean you may have to give something to me again. Right. But this is why. So, yeah, you get the cross-cut shredder. Yes. Right? Yes. <laughs> and for larger firms, you should be paying for them to come on site and shred it. Mm -hmm. um, but it's important that you, anything that has client's info that you don't. And it's important that you realize the rules on clicking on these links and oh. these emails um, because they're they're basically looking legit. I, I got one from Wells Fargo that's and I have Wells Fargo and it was like click here for I forgot what it was but I was like what why would they be sending me this and I went to the site and it was off by just a little it looked just like a Wells Fargo landing page and I sent it to their phishing department but it's that simple. I have a, an actual person uh, a colleague here in Virginia who said that he tests his employees. He has his IT department send fake emails mm. to the employees to see if they will click. I asked, does he fire them if they click? He said, no, there's counseling involved. Oh, but okay. see, you know, I'm meaner I'm than him. <laughs> Yeah. I said, don't click on any links. Yeah, no, you, you don't have the whole system get out. <laughs> so, but, but those are things you might even have to do is have testing to make sure people understand how they need to protect data because just clicking on a link could allow these hackers to get into the entire system and have access to all of your files. And even if it's, if, for lack of a better term, just an administrative professional. I think a lot of times we all we put all of that emphasis on the tax preparers, but even if it's an administrative professional that that may filter the information, they have to really especially be on guard because they get that one link and then they get connected right. to everything else. Yep. So you know it's just important for um, for you to really be cognizant of that. You know you're required to have your written data security plan that spells out what you're going to do to protect your client's data. Then you have your written data uh, breach response plan that you need to have that says, hey, 
you need to, you know, this is what we're going to do in order, you know, if, if we have, you have a breach. A breach. You know, and that should respond. include contacting your stakeholder liaison. Yes. Um, you should might have to contact the FTC and then you might have to contact state and IRS. Those, well, your stakeholder liaison would be IRS, but state agencies as well. But they need to know and then they should guide you further on what other steps you have to do um, to inform your clients. Yeah, so it's, you know, so it's real. Breaches are real. I mean, you think it may never happen to little low you. Right. Oh, but you just wait. So it is better to be safe than And sorry. how about Binance getting hacked? Right? right? <laughs> <laughs> that what? Man. So for all you cryptocurrency people, the, yeah. one of the biggest uh, off, well, I would say offshore, but yeah, foreign, foreign uh, wallets, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. to speak. Yeah. That was cryptocurrency is Binance. It's in Malta, whatever, yeah, wherever Malta. that is, <laughs> island. <laughs> Right? So right. so it's supposed so to be the island. most, right, it's like an island. <laughs> I'm not sure how that's secure, but it is supposedly one of the most secure and unhackable wallets for cryptocurrency. And it was hacked for like 41 million, like a couple weeks ago. Yeah. That so was tra- man. people get into everything. I mean, this is like all blockchain, super high tech technology. You can't get in. You can't, you know, people think crypto is untraceable or whatever. They got hacked. 41 million. But they have not hacker conferences. Enough. They do. So they get together and discuss how to do this stuff, right? You've they got to be they careful. They have hacker conferences. You have good hackers, the people that, you know, help to put the security systems in place to prevent hacking. And then you have the bad hackers right. that go through and figure out how to get through right. all this That's other just stuff. a challenge for a hacker to say, you, I'm unhackable. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, yeah I'm going to. <laughs> so, <I'm> yeah, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> Pretty much, that's what happens. So it happens to everyone, so you have to be careful. You can't think, just like with tax audits, people say, I only make this much money, so they're not gonna audit me. You can't think because you're a small firm or you only do 100 returns or you do less than that, that that you can't be hacked. And like Lissandra said, it it applies to every contact you've basically made. So you definitely want to take precaution no matter how small, and the larger you are, it's probably more risk. Mm -hmm. So you, if you work for a larger firm or you own a larger firm, that's something to look for. I just don't gamble like that. It's like everything is cool until you, you know, you try that campaign and get elected. When you get hacked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, what can you do after that? Yeah, so you, know, you right, go figure out how you're going to pay out that $100,000. Yeah. That's you're done. You, you need a new job after <laughs> that. It's over. Yeah. So, um, and speaking of cryptocurrency, just to go back to that, there mm-hmm. um, should be more guidance coming soon. Yeah. The last guidance we had was in 2014. A lot of information has come out with crypto returns and a lot of people are preparing them and there's still questions on things like hard forks. And so um, Congress has asked that the IRS define those things and make them more clear in terms of how we should be handling them. Because there's just an IRS notice out right now. Um, there's no real guidelines or yeah there was nothing after that like, right okay, here's the basics like okay great put it on 89.49 okay bye <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's basically what that's it. It. And so. so now that it's that cryptocurrency is evolving and i think what happened is, is people thought that cryptocurrency was going to be a fad in yeah that way. they did that has not happened no so it's now, going up and down and up and down but it's still here it's still stay. here and you know and now that there's you know there's banks and stuff that are having crypto okay and i think that's when it yeah. really got real when banks said okay cool we're in. we're in yeah and so now the irs guidance is going to have to catch up because there's there's so much more happening with cryptocurrency that this that IRS notice from 2014 just yeah. ain't cutting it. Nope. So look for that and then what should we end with? Make sure you update your W-4. <laughs> <laughs> the W-4 y'all. <laughs> They're supposed to be changing it yet again but all I've seen so far like uh, inflationary changes like the higher standard deductions and things but um, it's still like four pages and it's still dramatic and the calculator online is still complicated but it's still you should be doing this for your clients. Just checking their paychecks, and you should be doing it for yourself. Right, and this, and you know, just remind your clients to do that because 
you know, unless you're getting their pay. You probably don't have to remind them that much this year after this last tax season, because uh, I, I don't think anybody listened to this last year, but this year after they've had this tax season, it's like, you want to do a paycheck checkup? Sure, I'll do it, because I don't want to get blindsided. Right. So you should be doing that, because it's June, so this is a good mid-year point right. to get an idea of where people are. I would I would say that's a good practice yeah, for the I, summer. I would say so. Figure out if you're halfway there, and if you are, fantastic. If you're not, you can make adjustments. If you're over, still got time to make an estimated payment June 15th. Sure so all that's right. all I got. That's it. Right. Thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll all see right. you next all month. Right. And if you haven't liked us on Facebook and enjoyed this event, please consider liking us now, and we will see you guys next month. Take care, guys.